Oh, hello there. Yes, um, I thought today, because we've run out of the West's videos with the New Culture Forum, we'd have a look at uh, this, which is the keynote speech from Hello, I'm Peter Whittle, um, to the New Culture Forum, the annual conference. Um, yeah, let's dive in and see what he's got to say. Thank you to, of course, most importantly, to our brilliant array of speakers. Um, they come as fresh water to anyone who struggles through the desert of platitudes, woke obsessions, and ideological spinning which emanates from our media and digital establishment on a daily basis these days. Yes, indeed. Um, just that particular one is a bit of an irony-free zone. Um, if, if, if there's one group of people uh, that are ideologically or woke-obsessed, it would have to be the New Culture Forum. They talk about nothing else. Um, I, I always love these meetings because um, they're always so diverse. I mean, um, there must be some people there that are under 50, uh, not counting the photographers. Uh, if you took the photographers out of the room, I'm guessing the average age there would be uh, about 65. And uh, no, I'm not being rude. I'm old as well. Let's move on. So thank you very, very much to our speakers. And uh, just in case um, uh, <laughs> you're wondering about how exactly diverse the audience is, well, that figure right at the back with the beard, that's Rafe. He's Canadian. OK, so it's a truly international audience, said very few people. Let's move. Sometimes, you know, when we look at that political media establishment, and then we look back to our everyday lives and our own experiences. It seems like they are living in an alternate universe. It does seem it's a universe that seems not to be concerned, particularly, with an increasing sense of law and order breakdown. It's a universe which, in which stu uh, statues are not toppled. Police do not turn up on people's doorsteps because of things written on social media. Yes, I thought he was going to uh, um, go into territories there where I was going to have to agree with him. I mean, um, I often bang on about the disconnect between the media and what ordinary people think. But um, yes, he goes into the concept of law and order because of all them woke police. I'm not worried about the woke police. I am worried about the police full stop. Um, they might well come round to my house to arrest me for something that I've said, but it won't be due to the fact that I'm complaining about trans issues or something similar. Anyway, let's move on. Universe which sees racism everywhere and cannot define what a woman is. It's a universe which doesn't appear to comprehend the extent of the political transformation of our institutions. Indeed, it's the universe which appears not to take seriously the very threat to the foundations of our nation and civilization. Now, as you know, we have always known in the New Culture Forum that it really isn't just about economics. You know, I'm rev reminded of a passage by Evelyn War in his novel, Bright Head and Distance, I'm sure you know. But he describes the character of a very brash financier called Rex Motrin, Rex Motrin, who's joined the March Main family, who are steeped in their own foibles and their own sense of history and tradition. And Evelyn War wrote, this is the quote from he wasn't a complete human being at all. He was a tiny bit of one, unnaturally developed. But he was something absolutely modern and up-to-date that only this age could produce. A tiny bit of a man, pretending he was a whole. Now, you don't have to share even more nostalgia to see the analogy, nor fail to understand the dire 
economic straits that we find ourselves in to appreciate how the whole of this country now appears to be treated, I believe, as merely a balance sheet or an international land exchange. Well, yes, indeed. I wonder who they can be. I have a feeling that it's me. Let's move on. They understand it far more clearly than the political and media class who are the real sheep. They are the people who are prone to a herd-like adherence to intellectual fashion. But those who seek to govern us, whoever they might be, cannot, must not, continue to avoid or ignore the attack on our culture, history, and indeed our very sense of ourselves as a nation. For that to happen, they must eventually be forced to acknowledge the extent of the problems. As we've seen today, the fact that our institutions have been captured by the left, the fact that a woke ideology now brooks no opposition and dominates all areas of public life from the police to our schools, from our museums, to the civil service. The fact that our history is being deconstructed and delegitimized before our very eyes. The fact. Okay, yeah. These facts, of course, aren't facts in the slightest. Um, they are a construction. I'm going to use that word of Peter's by the libertarian right here in the States and across most uh, westernized, if I can use that phrase, just to borrow the new culture forums, Niger of the West. Um, this idea that uh, uh, institutions are run by a group of Marxist culture warriors is, I'm sorry, but it is just absolutely farcical. But the thing that it does is that it plays into this notion that something must be done. You know, it, it's, it, it abandons the notion of, of, of society moving forwards. And indeed, I mean, he denigrates fashion earlier. He, you know, this idea that people can change their minds about things. No, it's a sinister plot. They are out to get us that free speech is increasingly restricted by so-called hate speech legislation and a creeping unofficial blasphemy law. Now there is so much that can be done if the political will is there. Such will is absent from our main political parties. Now people are angry, desperate and often feel powerless. Philip this morning pointed out reasons to be cheerful and he's right. But also, all around, I see signs of ordinary, exasperated people grouping together, forming alliances, and becoming active. And for me, this is so hugely encouraging. Days like today are encouraging. Next year, we'll see a general election. Now, we at the NCF we will be putting together a series of pledges which we will present to all candidates to sign. Okay, just to dive in there before he gets on to his interesting cough cough ideas about a way forwards. Um, yeah, I, I mean, you, you can see exactly the direction of travel of this lot. I mean, I would agree with him about people becoming exasperated and therefore deciding to do something about it. This is a good thing. I'm the type of person that will always agree that it's a good idea that people are politically active. But if you see what's actually happening with people becoming politically active, the supposedly don't care government culture warriors have decided to simply shut down all of that stuff. I'm just wondering if Peter is, has any concept of, for example, if, if he thinks he's not going to get it, getting his way, if, is he going to lead a march? Because that's illegal. Yeah. Anything beyond writing to your MP has basically been banned in the UK. You know, this, this notion of, of the wokes getting away with it, no matter what, because of the police, unfortunately doesn't actually join together with what we might call reality.
Now, we are not a political party, but this will act as our manifesto. We are not a political party yet, but this will act as our manifesto. It's a very effective way, pledges, of ascertaining where those who seek to govern us actually stand on the issues that mean so much to us and which we've been discussing today. But in the meantime, I would like to share with you something of my own vision of the future that we've been talking about, my suggestions of what maybe should be done. First of all, all institutions which stray from their remit by prioritizing ideology must be challenged and, if necessary, lose any public funding. Right, just to dive in there, yes. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, there's a plethora of these types of groups on the right now. They're all designed to apply pressure. There's there's no way the New Culture Forum is going to form its own political party. That's farcical. But what they're designed to do, a la um, the Brexit party with Nigel Farage, is apply pressure to the Tory right to bring in legislation that they want. And here we have the first one. Um, institutions that do things ideologically. What a wonderful phrase that is, isn't it? Um, any definition there of what's ideological? Well, what they mean, as ever, by ideological is things we don't like, yes? Left-wingers are ideological. Right-wingers are always commonsensical. But this notion, oh, we'll just stop it. Well, OK, then, that'll be great. Interesting about charities in the UK. If they don't like what you're doing, you ain't going to be a charity anymore. Those bodies which, instead of promoting Britain and caring for its history and heritage, actively undermine it, should be abolished. <laughs> the entrenched heads of so many of these quangos should be fired. <laughs> it can be done, ladies and and new, more sympathetic appointments made instead. Yes, indeed. We'll um, just get rid of those people um, in charge of things that we don't like. Presumably, they'll have to be party members. I mean, again, I, you know, so often when you listen to the rhetoric of people like this, it does remind you about a different period in history about 100 years ago, where people just felt that if they applied force in the right place, they could bring about nirvana. It's a very, very dodgy concept of, of just simply saying, well, we'll just simply barge our way through this. It, you know, it flies in the face of, of, of any form of localised democratic accountability. You know, if people in the charity vote a particular way, then that's the way they voted. But as far as Peter would be concerned, it's like, well, we'll just ignore that. We'll just ignore that because it's not what we want. This is this is an authoritarian top-down approach. This isn't democratic. Anyway, let's move on. We must not continue to tolerate this massive, permanent, ideological opposition as though there is no alternative. There is. There should be a ban, a complete ban, on the teaching as though it were fact of critical race theory and gender ideology in schools. Right, just to dive in there, um, I've made videos about this. CRT is not taught in schools. Full stop. Okay, it is not taught in British schools. What he means, same as the uh, right in America do, they want a particular version of history being taught, whereby the British Empire was just there to ensure that people working in rubber plantations in Malaysia were happy. That's what he's after. And this notion, again, you notice about top down, top down, we know best, no like. The indoctrination of our children, the indoctrination of our children, 
must end. It must be stated, it must be stated unequivocally, finally, that there is no blasphemy law in this country and that we will, and that we will never ever again tolerate a situation where a teacher has to go into hiding for showing his pupils cartoons of Mohammed as recently happened in battle. Now, we will put together a series of pledges, as I said. Those are just a flavour. Those are yes, <laughs> we have got the flavour of those, Peter. Yes, indeed. Um, yes, we shouldn't have blasphemy laws. I entirely agree with that. But again, that isn't really what Peter means. He's talking about certain religions, certain views, not his. In my own particular passions. Finally, uh, as we've heard today, Ray spoke eloquently about this. Anyone who demurs from the official narrative that mass immigration is an untrammeled good and that diversity is the main source of our strength faces ostracism, insult, and charges of racism. Lobbyists for migration, whose motives are never questioned, they're never questioned by the media, have successfully managed to blur the crucial distinction between the moderate levels of migration allowed by any normal country, and the same with this country until the 90s, and the mass migration of the type Britain has experienced over the past 20 years. Okay, and again, yes, indeed, we get to the nexus, the crucial thing. It's about all those brown people. Um, this notion, <laughs> this notion that uh, people on the left magically don't believe in borders and believe in unparalleled um, immigration. We really don't. We really never have done. If you want to look at who's fully in favour of immigration, you really need to point directly at the government and any notion that 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 that. <laughs> <laughs> that mass migration isn't in any way questioned in this country is patently laughable. People are reasonable. I can easily make such a distinction. But they're not listened to. Indeed, they are demonised, actively ignored. Now, my own belief is that the situation has reached a critical point and that there has got to be an end to mass migration. To those that say that such an idea is unreasonable, I would say that for those years that has been happening, it is the British people who've been treated unreasonably by those who have instead ignored them or demonized them. In the meantime, it's time, it is the imperative for people like us not to give up in despair. I'm not despairing, I hope you are not too. Things can and do change. Now, whatever your view on what's happened since, nobody would have believed that 10 years ago, one day, Britain would leave the EU. No one. They would think that you were crazy. But it happened. We learned, and my long and frontline experience in UKIP confirmed this to me, that you don't have to have hundreds of elected MPs to have a huge influence on politics. You just don't. That is a new development in this country, thank goodness. And it's incredibly important considering the electoral system we have. Now, likewise, I believe that the cultural assault which we see happening every day, 24 hours, will eventually be overcome. I believe that. You make me it might take time, but it will happen. We must have faith. In the meantime, I would say to you, surround yourself with like-minded people. Surround yourself with things that you value. For make, for make, uh, make no mistake, you know, any attempt to seriously confront not just the issue of like mass migration, but the 
wholesale hollowing out of this great country will be met with a ferociousness that will make Britain look tame, British Brexit look tame. But you know, it will be worth it. And you know, the future of our country depends on it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, yes, there you have it. A small amount of implicit threat there at the end. Um, yes, you know, things do change, and they want change, but they hate change at the same time. And, you know, you end up with all of these kind of ridiculous straw man arguments. And yet, implicitly in this, you know, although obviously Peter would think, would think to himself, well, it's obviously you're going to say that as this woke cultural Marxist bad person this is implicitly racist this is implicitly racist to a white audience he's standing there with a union jack and he's basically blaming our ills on immigration now this wouldn't be un out of place with the nf in the 80s it's exactly the same thing. The targets are the same. Lefty teachers, weird financiers who oddly might be Jewish, all the rest of it. It all ties into it. Now, people like this don't like you drawing those analogies, but I, but I have to. Those are the historical analogies that there are. And again, you know, one of the reasons why they don't like this notion of questioning history is because people that question history and know history will come up with those analogies and we're right there at the moment you again you just have to look at the laws that this government is passing which are vastly undemocratic vastly undemocratic so on that level yes he's right but he's arguing for more of it because then the right people will be locked up obviously anyway yeah Please do mention in comments exactly how I'm wrong. I'm sure I am enormously, but I, I don't see how anyone can watch this and not think effectively that this rhetoric is extremely right wing. And it is mainstream. Yeah. Peter Whittle has his own forums that he moves in. And you can see it. You know, there's just this veneer of of respectability about him. But, 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 the historical parallels are truly terrifying. Anyway, have a lovely rest of the day. As I say, please do feel free to tell me how wrong I am. I always like that. <laughs>